Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen. Thank you so much for listening today. As always, go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Go subscribe and snag our free 31-page PDF on the top 200 drugs. A great little resource uh, just for brushing up on your, your knowledge, uh, preparing for board exams. Um, just a, a great little resource I put together personally uh, with a lot of my you know clinical experience and, and sharing things that you actually see uh, out in practice as well as things that definitely show up on uh, board exams and pharmacology exams and things like that. So again, uh, reallifepharmacology.com. Go subscribe. We'll get you updates when we've got new podcasts available as well. All right, so let's talk about the drug of the day today, and that is Secubitril Valsartan. Brand name of this medication is Entresto. Uh, it is a combination medication. So uh, let's start with the easy one first, so Valsartan. Uh, if you go back through the list of podcasts, I believe I have covered uh, ARBs specifically. Um, so I talk a little bit more about that, that mechanism of action in there. Uh, you know, also, you know, that kind of works on the same pathway as uh, ACE inhibitors. So definitely a lot of similarities between ARBs uh, and ACE inhibitors uh, through their adverse effects, as well as kind of the mechanistic uh, pathway there. So again, I'll refer you back to those uh, episodes uh, to talk more uh, specifically about the, the details between the, the mechanism of action there. Now, the other drug is a relatively uh, newer drug to the market compared to uh, ARBs. And Secubitril is actually classified as a neprilicin inhibitor. Uh, some pronounce it neprilicin. Uh, this enzyme basically breaks down uh, what are called natriuretic peptides. Okay, and so by inhibiting this enzyme that breaks down uh, those peptides that promote fluid loss and things like that, we're going to end up with more of these peptides hanging around. So the end result is more natriuretic peptides around. It's going to promote fluid loss, vasodilation, and ultimately lower blood pressure. Now, these things can definitely be helpful and have been shown to be helpful, advantageous, uh, for patients with heart failure, and speci more specifically, um, reduced ejection fraction heart failure. And that's where you're going to see this drug uh, used primarily, at least at, at this time. So um, remembering that mechanism can definitely help you uh, recall how it's going to uh, benefit a patient with heart failure who typically has um, you know, risks from elevated blood pressure and uh, fluid retention, things like that. So um, a drug that, you know, I've definitely seen more and more uh, use of over time here, um, but there are definitely a, a few clinical quirks that we, we need to monitor there as well. So uh, let's get into side effects a little bit. So with the Valsartan component, uh, we can think about some of the ARB adverse effects. So you've got hyperkalemia, um, possible renal impairment issues, uh, angioedema. Uh, you know, obviously this drug is going to lower blood pressure. So uh, there is a point, obviously, where too low a blood pressure is not a good thing for some patients. So um, important piece of the monitoring parameters, uh, as well as potassium, um, and we're going to monitor creatinine and, and renal function there as well. So very, very important things to, to look out for when using uh, this medication. Uh, a couple other things of, of note, uh, angioedema is a risk, you know, with this combination, just like it is with, with ACEs and, and uh, ARBs when they're being used alone. And ARBs, you know, Valsartan in this case, is contraindicated in pregnancy. So that's an important thing to, to recall as well. But, you know, patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction, generally they tend to be older, um, but there may be certain circumstances where uh, you may see use in, in younger patients. But by and large, most patients are, are going to be older that are, are on this medication. Uh, I want to talk specifically, this is a, a little clinical quirk that comes up. Uh, I've definitely seen it in board exams and things like that. So ACE inhibitors are one of the drugs of choice in heart failure with reduced injection fraction. Uh, however, when we put a patient on 
uh, Entresto, so Cubitril, Valsartan, we absolutely should not use or continue the ACE inhibitor with this medication. So this is definitely something that comes up in practice because patients will be on a beta blocker, they'll be on an ACE inhibitor, and, you know, if we want to try to improve mortality or, or whatever we're trying to do with the Entresto, we want to switch them over, um, we have to remember uh, to manage that transition. So there is a recommended 36-hour washout period uh, with an ACE inhibitor before we start Secubitril Valsartan. So, again, very, very important to remember that patient on an ACE inhibitor, uh, 36-hour washout period uh, before we start uh, Entresto. And the reason for this is the evidence has shown that there's a significantly uh, greater risk of angioedema uh, when they are, are used together. So uh, definitely an important thing to remember, important thing to ask patients about. Uh, if you're you know, a pharmacist or a nurse helping a, a provider out, um, just making sure that everybody's on board and, and the patient understands what they're supposed to do and when they're uh, potentially supposed to start uh, taking this new medication and when they're supposed to uh, stop their, their ACE inhibitor. All right, uh, dosing, or just touch on it briefly because there's a, a little bit of quirky stuff there. So um, usual initial starting dose in patients not on an ACE or an ARB uh, is 24 milligrams of Secubitril with 26 milligrams of Valsartan. That's twice a day. Uh, and again, that's if they're on, you know, very low dose ACE or ARB or not on an ACE or, or ARB at all. Uh, if they're greater than 10 milligrams of enalapril equivalent per day, uh, then we can start at the higher dose. 49 milligrams of Secubitril, 51 milligrams of Valsartan twice a day. So dosing is kind of quirky. They don't fall on, on even numbers. Um, so that's, that's I think, an important thing to, to kind of note and, and remember and is, is definitely unusual. Um, but from there, obviously, we can uh, titrate up to the potential max of 97 milligrams and 103, again, respectively, Secubitril and Valsartan uh, twice a day. So, you know, it is a, a bit of a disadvantage having a, a twice daily uh, heart failure medication, um, given the fact that many heart failure patients uh, are already taking several medications. So, um, but again, very important to remember that quirk of, about ACE inhibitors, and then uh, also remembering that dosing um, if a patient is already on an ACE inhibitor, because we don't want to slam them too much with too much blood pressure uh, lowering, and, and they're not used to that. So, um, important things to remember about dosing and starting and things like that. All right, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and we'll wrap up with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, ambulatory care, geriatrics, uh, psychiatric exam, MTM exam, or the NAPLEX, go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, we've got a growing list of, of resources there to help you pass your board exam. Um, got great testimonials. People, um, you know, have, have reached out to me with success stories. So um, we've been been happy to provide a, a lot of that content to help people pass their exams for sure. So again, meded101.com slash store. Uh, we've also got Amazon books, Audible books. If you're not a pharmacist, just looking to brush up on your medication skills. We've got uh, drug interactions, uh, Perils of, of Polypharmacy is my latest book. Uh, that's recently out. So um, lots of different um, different strokes for different folks, so to speak. So uh, go check that out. And obviously by supporting uh, meded101.com, you're also help supporting this podcast uh, and keeping it free for all those to enjoy and, and benefit from. All right, so let's take a look at drug interactions. And there are definitely some things to, to think about. So, um, you know, ACE inhibitor and another ARB on board, that's definitely one of the first things I'm, I'm kind of thinking about. I, I talked about that already, so I'm not going to go into more detail there. Uh, obviously, blood pressure lowering medications, uh, you know, like Cinemet, for example, in, in Parkinson's disease kind of comes to mind, um, could have that additive blood pressure lowering effect uh, on top of Entresto. A hyperkalemia risk, so you think of your, you know, trimethoprim, your spironolactone, um, adding those on top of Valsartan, 
uh, could definitely raise uh, potassium levels to, to an unacceptable level, potentially. Uh, and then you've got, of course, renal risks. Whenever you use an ARB, uh, we got to think about, you know, diuretics and, and NSAIDs. Uh, those can all kind of work together, potentially, in a negative way um, to increase the, the risk of renal impairment. So uh, definitely really, really important to, you know, minimize that risk and obviously monitor um, renal function uh, by you know minimizing the use or avoiding uh, potential drugs. So again, in heart failure, uh, you know you probably are going to have a patient on a loop diuretic potentially with you know Secubitril, Valsartan, and that's something we can can monitor and follow. Um, but if somebody has issues with pain, things like that, you know, an NSAID's probably not going to be the safest choice that we can use um, in somebody with heart failure, as well as being on um, an ARB and a diuretic, for example, might greatly increase their risk for uh, renal impairment there. And then one last one that, that I wanted to mention is, is ARBs, you know, Valsartan here specifically can increase the risk for lithium concentrations to go up. So if you know you've got a patient on lithium, uh, it's always a good one to kind of double check and look up. Um, and just run the drug interaction screen if you see somebody on lithium. And sure enough, you know, ARBs in this case or Valsartan in this case um, can raise lithium concentrations potentially. So again, we're going to keep an eye out for lithium toxicity. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, found it helpful. Uh, if you'd be so kind and leave a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening, uh, that's certainly greatly appreciated. Uh, new book is just out, Perils of Polypharmacy. Uh, so you can go check that out on Amazon. Also, that link is is going to be right at meded101.com slash store. Uh, great book for anybody interested in geriatrics and how to reduce medications and a lot of the complications that go along with polypharmacy. So that is definitely uh, hot off the, the presses, uh, so to speak, there. And then, of course, sign up reallifepharmacology.com. Go take advantage of that free PDF. And then we'll also get you updates when we've got new podcasts available. You can track me down, mededucation101 at gmail.com. Or LinkedIn is probably the uh, social media platform I am most active on. Again, Eric Christensen, uh, PharmD, BCGP, BCPS. I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, take care. Hope you have a great rest of your day.